five of us were in a special election. It doesn't mean we're special, but because he is leaving his office on April 4th, there has to be a quick election. So we're going to be on the May 20th primary. If, the, uh, if no one gets 50.1%, at that point, there'll be a runoff on July 15th. I'm running to be a new voice on the Portland City Council. I think one of the most important issues facing our community today is the fact that we're pricing too many people out of our city. And I want to focus on four, four kinds of people. The poor, working families, the elderly, and young people. And I have some thoughts on how we can address all four problems. First, the poor. We have a 10-year plan to end homelessness in our community, which is a unique partnership with the city and the county. As your next city commissioner, I intend to lead that effort, partnering with the county. This isn't just good policy, it's morally right, and we have it within our power to end homelessness within our lifetime. Second, young people. We are attracting a lot of young people and creative types into this community, but they're being priced out as well. And we need to have affordable housing. That's why I'll take some of the resources out of our urban renewal districts and use it to build affordable housing for people who are not only poor, but are in that sort of mid-range. They can't afford housing in our current market. Third, our seniors. We have hundreds of seniors in our community who are in buildings that have federal subsidies. Those federal subsidies are going to end soon, and they are at risk of being evicted. We need a strategy to deal with this, and we need to do it ahead of the curve and not wait for this to unfold. It happened recently with Clay Towers, where a unique partnership, a group of people came together to maintain the housing for our seniors. I want to lead the effort on a community-wide basis to preserve that housing. And finally, working families. When working families can't afford to live here, lots of unfortunate things happen. Our neighborhoods are less strong, our schools suffer, we lose, we lose what makes this community great. For working families, they need a chance to have a home. And most of our homes, as you know, are unaffordable. So I, I would point to the model of what we did at the New Columbia in North Portland. Mixed-use development, side-by-side, -side, affordable housing, public housing, and home ownership opportunities. And not just home ownership opportunities for anyone, because we know in the current market and climate that putting families into housing they can't afford just leads to more misery. So we have to be smart. We have to have subsidies. We have to have programs that encourage people to save. We have to teach people about home ownership. But ultimately, it's about providing opportunities so people can have a taste of the American dream of owning their own home in our community. Uh, I'd like to be a new voice on the council. And I believe that the housing issue is our most fundamental problem. I'd love to take your questions in that moment's life. Sir, where would you get the money for the subsidies for the housing? Because you're talking about a lot more money than, than can be provided by the urban renewal districts. Well, if you took the urban renewal money, the 30% set aside, that's about $150 million over five years. So that's a pretty substantial amount of money. Uh, one minute left. We have <laughs> so that's one source. A second source is to go back to Salem and take another crack at the reporting fee. There was a consensus last time, joined by the realtors, to impose a uh, reporting fee tax, which would have generated about $50 million a year statewide for affordable housing. That's two sources that we can point to, assuming we don't get any, any relief from the federal government for the near term. Sir? What can keep the affordable housing affordable, say, five to 10 years from now? The reason that uh, Portland is not affordable anymore is because all of our properties have doubled in value. Uh, these are going to uh, uh, multiply it as we get another million people here in the next 10 years. And I couldn't agree more, and that's why we have to get people into home ownership ahead of the curve. The best strategy for dealing with gentrification in a number of our neighborhoods is to make sure that people can own their homes and then take advantage of the rise in values and build equity. If we wait till these neighborhoods are gentrified and people can't afford, then we're just displacing them. Hey, thanks very much. I'd be honored to have your support on May 20th. Thank you.